Hello, everyone. Welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar AAS Academy. Today, we will discuss the state of India-US relations as of now. This is basically because after the beginning of the Russia-Ukraine war, there have been some difference of opinion between India and the United States. This is a very low key issue in the sense that the United States is not particularly happy uh, that India abstained on the resolution of the Security Council. In other words, India had declined to condemn Russia for invading Ukraine. But this was not unexpected because India had good relations with Russia. And in our development of relations with the United States, this was not a factor. Even during the Cold War, India's relations with the Soviet Union, of course, was criticized by the United States because it is part of, we were appears, appeared to be on the side of the uh, Soviet Union at that time. Even though substantially we were not in the Soviet Union, we, were, we had interests, we had businesses, we had a lot of support from the Soviet Union, but basically, were not inclined towards communism or socialism or anything like that. Uh, but still, the entire Cold War, we had, an, uh, we had a rather uh, uneasy relationship. But we had cooperation with the United States, and the US never pointed out that our relationship with the Soviet Union had stood in the way of developing good relations with the United States. Their issues were more like uh, problems relating to uh, India's nuclear policy, human rights situation, et cetera, et cetera. But it was, we were clearly not on the side of the United States. And right from the beginning, the United States had taken the position that if we are, if you are not with us, you are against us. And therefore our non-alignment and non-aligned foreign policy were considered to be inimical to the interests of the United States. Though they took some interest in non-aligned movement and policies, et cetera. And they were grateful that we were not entirely in the Soviet, Soviet camp. But at the same time, they expressed dissatisfaction over the years over India's foreign policy. Because with the end of the Cold War, it had changed really substantially. And uh, we have had a different relationship since uh, the uh, Gulf War, that is after the uh, end of the end of the Cold War. Uh, but if you look at our relations with the United States from say 1960 to today, People refer to it uh, as a, a roller coaster relationship. But you understand what a roller coaster does. It goes up slowly, gradually, and when it reaches the top, it falls down much below the original level and reach the, reaches the rock bottom. And then again, it slowly rises and goes up to a certain level and then falls again. You know, that is a roller coaster ride. And those who, are, who have been on a roller coaster know knows exactly what it means. And that has been the situation with India-US relations. We can identify years when the roller coaster started moving up slowly, reaching a culmination point, and then slow, fast falling down because of or some development or the other. It can be easily identified. I'll not go into those details, but I'll tell you the, some of the points at which the roller coaster kept falling and then started going up again. Of course, the point of element, point of um, uh, unity between the United States and India kind of cooperation was based on the fact that India is the biggest democracy, while well, the United States is the oldest democracy, and two democracies had a kind of affinity towards each other. Uh, but at that time, it was called in the early years, it was called estranged democracies. Democracies but not uh, working together in an estranged manner they worked. And later period came that we started engaging with each other and then we were called the engaged democracies. And the third step is considered to be embracing democracies. That means alliances, close relationships, etc. We never reached that, we are still not and, and, and embracing democracies, but democracies which work together. 
And uh, the latest trend just before the Ukraine war was we were moving more and more towards the United States, the formation of the Quad, uh, President Trump's support at the time of the Ladakh war, etc. Et so this whole period can be can be seen like that. So first, suppose the period between, between uh, after the, with the Cold War, and after the Cold War in 1997, President Clinton uh, said for the first time that we need to see what is wrong in India-US relations, and we must study it. So we appointed a group, and the study came out saying that there were several, several things in India and the United States as two democratic nations could do. And uh, therefore, he started off consultation. And he even announced that he will visit India in 1998, when Mr. Gujarat was uh, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, but in early 1998, Mr. Gujarat lost his Prime Ministership, and there was he was a caretaker Prime Minister, and the President decided not to come at that time, and he said he will come after the elections. But after the elections, BJP came to power, and uh, soon after that, we had our nuclear tests. So the roller coaster, which was slowly going up, suddenly fell down. And we reached a rock bottom. And the worst kind of relationship we had between 1998 and 2000. But during that period, we started what I call the Jaswan Singh Straub Talbot talks, which lasted for two years, talking about the various issues, particularly the nuclear issue of which the Americans had a great anxieties about us. But at the end of uh, 1999, there was some understanding between India and the US, basically that India's nuclear capability was, did not pose a threat to the United States. Because initially they thought, you know, this uh, India's nuclear capacity might harm even the United States. They said so. They said, you know, India could bomb uh, Europe or United States itself. But all those were removed. We clarified our position and we said it was only a deterrent, etc. And it was found satisfactory to them. And President Clinton came to India in 2000. And the Vajpayee went to Washington in 2000 itself. And that reached another high point. The roller coaster was up again. And um, you know, things were going well, except for the question of what India's stature would be vis a -vis the NPT. They would have liked us to sign the NPT or the CTBT. We did not do either of them. So that was a, an issue which had remained. But by the before President Clinton went to India, some clarifications were available, but they were not fully satisfied with it. So in 2000, uh, everybody agreed that India and the United States have opened a new chapter. And slowly, we were working on various issues. Uh, but the the nuclear issue remained uh, unresolved. And then, uh, surprisingly, in 2005, came the understanding between President Bush and uh, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh that there could be a nuclear deal. 2005, it was announced. And India was recognized as some kind of a responsible nuclear power. Though we could not be called a nuclear weapon state, but we were a non-nuclear weapon state, but technically advanced and responsible state. We got some kind of a status like that. And then in 2008, we signed the nuclear deal with the United States. That was another high point. And uh, there was so much of enthusiasm for India and the United States to come together. We were planning to have more uh, nuclear reactors. Uh, India could buy and sell nuclear material. So all this, so virtually there were no other problems left in the in India-US relations. Then the question of implementation of the nuclear deal came up. And India passed an act, Nuclear Liability Act, which was not acceptable to the United States. And therefore, the nuclear trade, which was envisaged in the nuclear deal, did not come about. So there was again a lull after 2005, after 2008. And during the uh, presidency of uh, Barack Obama, he came to, the, to India in 2010, just before his second uh, election contest. And uh, by then, this uh, nuclear deal uh, implementation, there were some uh, difficulties 
on the part of um, India because of the nuclear uh, liability law. And so he was not particularly happy with his visit and there are also other problems. You may remember that an Indian diplomat was uh, detained and insulted and so on. So there was that period after 2010 to 2014, there was some, again another kind of a depression in the relationship. But then when Mr. Mr. Modi became prime minister, he went all out uh, to work out a relationship with the United States. And uh, he visited and uh, 2015, Barack Obama came to India and our relationship again reached uh, the highest level in 2016 when um, Mr. Modi made a second visit to the United States. And he declared in the US Congress uh, that uh, this is a new relationship. It's a new symphony, he called it. The orchestra is the same, but the symphony is going to be played. It's a new one. In every area we are agreed and there is no problem. It was a very, very happy, probably the highest level of relationship India had with the US was in 2016. But lo and behold, uh, the Democrats lost the election and President Trump came. Then there was a lot of uncertainty, initially at least. Mr. Trump had a different uh, world view. Though he didn't do anything against India, he was not willing to do anything for India either. And, uh, but Mr. Modi cultivated him also very, very uh, intensely. And uh, in fact, they became best of friends. And uh, in spite of the fact that 27, uh, 2017, there was a depression cut. Uh, by, uh, by the time the uh, second election contest came, uh, the incident in Ladakh happened and President Trump stood by us. It was very forthright. Meanwhile, the Quad was formed and again, the relationship came back to such a normalcy. And so uh, that was the situation under President Trump. And you know the famous statement that Prime Minister made about Adulay Sarkar will be from Sarkar. And then he came to India and big celebration and so on. But um, as it happened, he lost the elections. And then there was a complete, complete chaos and confusion. And uh, President Biden could not do anything in the initial one year, and he's still, still striving to get into his position. He never had a honeymoon with the people because his election was challenged, distance rose around everywhere. And so he didn't give much attention to India at that time because he was very preoccupied uh, with uh, China and Russia. And even today, he has not really formulated his policy on Russia and China. So in that situation, India did not get much attention, but uh, the, the election of uh, Indian origin person as vice president, and um, later some kind of cooperation, etc., came and it was moving towards normalcy. And also on Russia and China, a policy was evolving. That is when the the war broke out in Ukraine. So the United States, though, did not uh, go into war with Russia on this account. They are virtually at war because it is a sanctions war, as we have been discussing. And uh, so the situation is one of confrontation between Russia and the United States. So the war is between Russia and Ukraine, but actually the conflict is between NATO on the one side, the United States at its head, and India, um, you know, somewhat neutral. So this was not much appreciated by uh, President Biden because Afghanistan happened in between, but where we stood with. The United States. But in the case of uh, Ukraine, uh, we found ourselves in, uh, in a different situation. So initially, uh, President Biden was saying that, oh, Indians, we are talking, but they are a bit shaky, uh, but I hope they'll come around, etc., etc. That was the impression that he gave. Uh, but as more and more votes took place and the trade sanctions uh, were imposed, and India appeared not to join that uh, sanctions war. And we started buying uh, Russian oil. And in certain sense, uh, countered, you know, we're planning to, they're thinking in terms of a currency transaction, other than the dollar, 
to buy and sell oil and also buy other goods to India and uh, Russia, like we had a uh, rupee ruble in the old days of the, of the Soviet Union. So, uh, United States was not happy, not still not happy about uh, this development. And then there are a series of statements uh, when there were so many visits to India by uh, very important personalities. And uh, among them were also US uh, uh, senior officials. And they all express, express certain concern about India's uh, attitude, uh, which they did not think was uh, very effective. So it is in this context that uh, two things happened just yesterday. Uh, one was a virtual summit between uh, Prime Minister Modi and, uh, and uh, President Biden, in which they had a very heart-to-heart -heart conversation, at least the first part we heard publicly. And then what went on there, we have some descriptions of uh, uh, what really happened. Of course, the pre President Biden expressed hope that India's position will evolve and India will not do anything which would help uh, Russians to, uh, you know, support Russia's uh, work. And they appreciated the fact that India, in fact, condemned the attack on uh, Bucha, uh, where the American uh, Russians were guilty of massacring a lot of Ukrainians. So that was probably a, a, a message that we gave that we are not entirely in favor of Russia. And in our statements, we were criticizing Russia for violating the sovereignty of Ukraine. But because of this old habit that the United States has, you know, they are not very particular when, not particularly pleased when you have an opinion which is different from yours. And they would like you to come around. And this was clarified by several others. They expressed their opinion that they would have been happier if uh, India was with the US rather than with Russia. So our saying that we are not with Russia did not satisfy them. And one of the reasons for that was that India is no more just a friend. Uh, we have a, a strategic partnership in terms of the Quad. And out of the four countries in the Quad, it was only India, which voted differently from the others in the case of uh, Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine. And we abstained on several relations, several resolutions. Even the last one, you know, suspending Russia from the Council for Human Rights. Even there we abstained. Uh, but of course we criticized all that Russia's atrocities uh, in Ukraine and so on. So, but the message that we got at the uh, summit between uh, President Biden and uh, Prime Minister Modi, and later the two plus two meeting, you know, the, this is a traditional meeting is the fourth round, where finance, sorry, foreign ministers of both sides and uh, defense ministers of both sides meet together. There is a certain meaning because some kind of a defense cooperation is involved in that. So in fact, President Biden, when he started his conversation with uh, Prime Minister Modi, spoke first about defense cooperation because he put that very bluntly and he said, we are expanding cooperation in defense because of the general impression that India is dependent on Russia, which is true, but still Russia supplies a lot of material to us and is considered some kind of a legacy. And the Americans are not opposing that, even in the case of S-400 and also in the case of Putin, and Pulam and so on. They were not making a fuss about it. Uh, they allowed these things to be a kind of continuing cooperation between the old Soviet Union and India. And it was beneficial to India and therefore they were not very critical of it. But now in the, in the change situation, they have started egging us on to do more things. Uh, someone does, you know, very senior people came to India. Someone spoke about the so-called NAM G77 relationship to Russia. Because Russia is not in G, NAM, not in G77. Uh, but uh, they, they are calling it some kind of anti-US grouping of some kind, notionally, non-aligned movement and G77. And uh, Russia seems to have similar uh, positions. In fact, China is a member of, uh, is an observer in G77, because these are all developing countries' concerns. And so that the Americans realized, so they wanted us to go so slow on that. 
and uh, particularly considering that the US is now engaged in uh, supporting India in developing our uh, defense capability. You know, they are supplying machinery equipment. And they hinted, the president said that we are also ready to give you more things. And there the, the hint was, or the suggestion was, that if you separate yourself from Russia, or if you don't get defense equipment from Russia, we are here to, uh, to help you. So that kind of a, a message went out. And, uh, but it came out very clear, really, repeatedly, that uh, as long as India's relations with Russia are um, uh, not favorable to the United States, it might somehow introduce a new element in me into US relations, that Russia becomes some kind of a benchmark. How you behave with Russia will determine your relationship with the US. This is a new element, which had not happened even in the Cold War era. So that's why today I have written an article called uh, Ukraine War. Um, no, it's called um, US introduces Russia benchmarks into India relations. So they're saying that, you know, it depends on what you think about defense, what you think about Ukraine, what you think about NATO, all these factors uh, will be taken into account in establishing the relationship with, uh, with Russia. And the oil trade issue is a, is a substantial one, but even like our external affairs minister said the other day, that the amount of oil that we buy from, the, from Russia is uh, much less than what Western Europe buys in one afternoon. What month we have purchased oil from Russia is less than what you know, in, uh, you know West European countries are buying uh, one afternoon, he said. In other words, ours is a very neg negligible purchase of oil, while the United States and uh, the European Union, Western Europe, which are supposedly at you know, you know sanctions war against Russia, are actually buying oil from Russia. So that was the that was the answer that we gave. So in other words, we have not given any commitment to scale down this, and also we are trying to have some kind of a rupee ruble arrangement by which we can have trade without the involvement of, of the dollar currency. So that also might harm the sanctions. So the Americans are most concerned about actions by India, uh, which seem to support Russia against the sanctions imposed by the United States and uh, the NATO countries. So this is what the new message came. And uh, nowhere did it, of course, we don't know exactly what happened. Uh, but from the so-called readouts on both sides as to what happened, uh, the, this is repeatedly comes out very clear that something needs to be done by India in order to improve relations with the United States. Uh, but so far, we have not seen any indication that India has in any way surrendered our position. They, they seem to have, Indian delegation, Prime Minister himself, uh, seems to have remained steady on this policy of what we need is not sanctions, what we need is not war, what we need is to uh, hold negotiations between the two countries, that is Russia and Ukraine, and thus resolve it. So Prime Minister repeatedly told them that our interest is to get Putin and Zelensky to speak to each other, uh, which would certainly make it necessary, it will it may possible for, and there is no other way. Sanctions or war are not a solution. So that is where we have stood. Uh, but at the same time, we are given indication that we do not approve of what Russia has done. So, but this small element of coercion is visible in all areas. For example, the Deputy National Security Advisor, when he came here, he hinted that there could be sanctions against India if India did not support sanctions against uh, Russia. And he did not mention CATSA, but he hinted that there is such a thing as CATSA also, and they have not ruled out uh, sanctions on account of the S-400 themselves. So, but this was again immediately countered by the White House itself by saying that it was not a threat, it was only a wish, and this wish is for the sake of India itself and not for the sake of the uh, United States. So, the message is loud and clear which came out yesterday was that, yes, they are not, uh, are not most unhappy that India 
has not, a, not voted in favor of all those resolutions. Uh, but that they feel that uh, as a member of the Quad, India has certain responsibilities towards the United States. So we are not simply friends. Uh, we have a relationship uh, which is expected of each other uh, to have uh, uh, similar points of view on international relations. And this is yet to be obtained. And uh, that will remain in the minds of the Americans that India is not fully with them. But we are very clear that uh, what, we are, what we are doing is right. And uh, we are hoping that uh, the, as the war finishes and the, uh, and the sanctions are withdrawn, our relationship will go back to uh, normal times. But uh, it is true that we are not at the, at the highest level. It was at the highest level at the time, towards the end of uh, President Trump's presidency because of the China factor. But Biden has not made up his mind on the China factor as yet, whether he'll come to our help if uh, there was any difficulty on the border. And the, he has an ambivalent approach to China itself because he talks about cooperation, he talks about competition, he talks about rivalry, but he does not talk about a new Cold War, which is really being shaped. Now the Cold War with Russia and China on one hand and the United States on the other is what we are seeing, not the other Cold War, what we had thought that there would be US and China and Russia would be in the middle and some middle states like India or France, or Germany, etc. would be able to work together on another front. Uh, but now things are changed. China-Russia relations have uh, improved. And of course, uh, in general terms, uh, the, uh, the situation is a little bit unstable as far as India-US relations are concerned. So I just wanted to bring your attention to that because in the examinations that follow, you will need to be, bear in mind the exact state of relations between India and the United States and which way it is likely to go. Thank you.